Sure. My name is Tim Bender, and I'm the vice president of the global consumer business for NVIDIA. And that means uh, I work with the teams uh, around the world who take the uh, consumer products uh, to market with partners and to retailers and retailers. Uh, it's primarily the gaming business, uh, which is the GeForce brand. Well, AI is at the infancy, and what NVIDIA does is that we provide the, uh, the foundation, the infrastructure. Uh, we provide uh, the tools to enable the, uh, the, the design, the building, and the deployment of uh, c computing models. The latest and the biggest buzz, of course, is AI. Uh, but we've been doing, uh, for many years, uh, hyperscale uh, cloud uh, data centers, which accelerate computing through a combination of the world leading edge um, graphics uh, processing units, GPUs, um, and also uh, through software layers and uh, software applications to uh, compute. So what's coming next is we continue to advance our hardware and our software layers, but every day new applications come on board as more companies come into the space and they decide which, in which specific areas or verticals they want to work. We've been doing AI and gaming for now almost six years, since the uh, 2018 touring launch. And uh, if you've noticed games in the last few years, the um, the realism, the how the dynamic aspect of the game, how fast they play, how beautiful they look, 4K, you can get 4K in over 200 frames per second. That's all because of AI, and Nvidia's led that. I think the beautiful thing is that. Everything else that's going on in the world today uh, with AI uh, being the next uh, you know, foundational model for computing, we're gonna reap all those benefits. So the investments in that space and all the new um, deployment of people and um, you know, capital and development is gonna benefit the gaming industry. And so we, we think the, you're gonna, the gaming um, is, is going to be uh, very vibrant and growing for many years as a, uh, as a complement to AI and, and not in a detriment. Well, I, I think the trend will continue. Um, and it's, you know, up until, you know, you know somewhere in the first, second decade of uh, the century, um, everyone was counting on Moore's Law to add more and more transistors uh, every year uh, into uh, chips. And we saw we're running out of room, that the, the, the chips have gotten so small, the number of transistors you can place on there was smaller. So NVIDIA started adding tensor cores to its chips, but uh, just as importantly was software to accelerate the compute. So I believe that software will continue to drive exponential uh, levels of compute. Um, based, but as, at the same time, you know, the, the underlying hardware is, is getting better as well. Um, so don't have perfect math on it, but all trends uh, indicate that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be less than that as far as the time to improve the multiplication of uh, compute. Unfortunately, that's outside of my space. I, I'm not an expert in this area, so uh, it would be impossible for me to calculate or to qualify what exactly you're going to see. Uh, I'm probably seeing about what you're seeing out there today. Um, so I, I really couldn't give you a, a great answer on that. Yeah, we, um, I can't comment on anything in the future. We just don't do that. What we have in front of us today is pretty amazing. And you know, every day the, um, the use cases are expanding and the applications are you know, they're multiplying. And, you know, so we, we work on what's right in front of us today. And, and that's that's what my team focuses on. You know, the, 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 our, if you look at our history, you've, generally you've seen that. You've seen a very similar uh, architecture. The beautiful thing about NVIDIA architecture is that um, it's been able to support, you know, multiple um, applications, business segments. So gaming, creating, enterprise, healthcare, you know, science research. It's, 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 been, a, it's been a trend. And um, again, we don't comment on the future. Um, however, you know, we try to use leverage our architecture across as many businesses because it makes it, you know, uh, more affordable and uh, 
It's a better, better business model. Well, we're really best on developing um, the end. We, we're, first of all, we, we, we like to study and understand everything end to end, right? From the, the chip design to the manufacture of the chip to the, uh, the, the capabilities of users looking at the applications that are used at the end. So, so we like to say we, um, you know, like a good cook running a restaurant needs to know everything from the ingredients to how to use, how to cook it, how to prepare it, how to serve it, experience it for the customer. We, we, we're somewhat similar in that, in that space. We always extend ourselves when it makes sense, where there's a gap or an opportunity for us to innovate. So we're always looking at innovation opportunities, but our main, our main goal is to help partners to design, build, deploy uh, these big systems, right? And then we provide SDKs for the, for, for the developers to develop the applications. So that, that's our core. We really are partner enabling, and that's, that's what our, our biggest strength is. It probably improves the experience from many facets. AI allows the developers, right, to have new tools to develop faster um, than they would ordinarily. So like the rendering, right, the design, pro the design phase, right? Also, the uh, speed at which games can play and the, and the fidelity. Um, when we introduced DLSS in the first architecture in 18, 2018, um, you could not play at 60 frames per second, probably even at 1080p, right? Maybe 30. Now you can play 4K, um, over 240 frames for something like Modern Warfare 3 with DLSS 3.5. Or 3.0, 3.0. So um, those things wouldn't be possible without AI. So in the NVIDIA graphics cards are tensor cores, and these tensor cores allow us to speed up um, everything in the game. And we can render frames very quickly with using, say, one-eighth of the pixels. So we don't need to look at an entire frame or an entire frame. We can take one frame, look at one-eighth of the pixels, make the next frame, and, and, and so uh, these wouldn't be possible with, without AI. And then, you know, I think where we're going to go in the future with these new games, you're going to have so many branching opportunities. So a, a game can be created, and usually a, a game kind of has branching, but it goes to one end. It might have a couple different endings. I think these future games, you could have, you know, many different endings when you're looking at role play games, open world games. Um, and so, um, it's going to change the experience from the design to the use uh, case. Um, we have we have a product um, that we call Ace, and Ace is a call, it's an avatar cloud engine, right? And what you're able to do is take characters, not usually the primary characters, but non-primary characters in the game that you might just see on the side and ignore. Um, and what you can do is take those characters. And through, through these NIMs, these microservices, right, you can embed um, massive amounts of data and information and personality into that character. So that character can take on a, a, a life form of realism, where you, through natural uh, language, can have a conversation with a character in a game. So a simple example is if, if there's a character in a game and uh, the character is a bartender, you can ask that bartender, hey, how do I make an old-fashioned? Or how do I make this or that? And they're going to be accessing a container of data, right, that you have uh, predisposed them to have access to, and they'll be able to carry on a conversation. Same thing with a cook. Same thing with, uh, you could specialize any character in a game and have fun with it. Well, um, our economic history shows that these changing technological uh, revolutions and evolutions have added jobs. So some jobs will be replaced. But do you know that at the end of the 1800s uh, in North America, there were over 100,000 um, blacksmith who made shoes for horses. And when the automobile was coming out, everyone was worried about what's going to happen to all these blacksmiths. What are they going to do for a job? Well, do you know that as we sit here today, April 2nd, in Mexico City, that in Mexico alone, when over 100,000 people 
work in the automotive industry. So I think we have uh, definitely taken something that people were worried about, and now there's you know tens of millions of people working in the auto industry. And so it's gonna enable industries and businesses that you haven't even imagined. And it's also gonna allow people in their current jobs to do them better, faster, and it's gonna allow companies to take assets and to deploy them in new areas where maybe they couldn't invest in the past, so they can save money here and they can invest in this segment. So we are very positive about the change that'll come in, in technology has shown that's been the case. Um, that being said, you know, you know, I, I think we all want to be careful about what we what our, what our careers are going to be. But I think uh, this could be a great equalizer because the amount of access people are going to have to information and expertise because of AI is going to be unprecedented. So we think general uh, uh, generation gener generative AI is uh, is, a, is a great leveling of the playing field for people. Our final comment is that I think NVIDIA uh, is, is both proud and lucky that we've been able to participate in so many industries. So we have so many fans that started in the gaming industry, then we had them in the creator industry, you know, whether it's movies, photography, all kind of creators, um, editors, influencers, et cetera. But now we're touching so many new industries in, in healthcare, um, in sciences, and in all kinds of other areas, research and development to improve uh, the, uh, the life of humans, to look at our earth and understand how we can best utilize the resources we have in the earth. And so I'm lucky. I think everyone in Viti feels proud that we're participating in so many areas. And Mexico has been a great um, market for us. We're growing and thriving here across many, many businesses. I'm excited to be here. And I want to thank everyone who's been supporting NVIDIA out there and hope that we can continue to have a positive impact in Mexico. Oh, I wish I could tell you, and I really wish I could tell you. <laughs> um, it'll be here. I, 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 listen, it's going to be exciting. But right now, there's a lot of great things to play. So it's going to play what's in front of us. Um, but uh, the future, I think, is very bright for the gaming industry, and it's a great time to be a gamer. <laughs>